Panorama TV presents Digital Photography One-on-One, -on -One, where we answer your questions. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hi everybody, welcome to this week's episode of Digital Photography One-on-One. -on -One. I'm Mark Wallace. Well, this week we don't have a specific question from a specific person. In fact, we have a question that's been asked by many, many people over many months. And the question is simply, what settings do I use on my camera? Now, the reason that we get asked this is because in different situations, you have to use different settings on your camera, so there's no one answer. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk you through a, an exercise that I've taught in my workshops for years, and it will help you with sort of a, a mind workflow, some questions to ask yourself, so you'll know what to set your camera on. Now, remember, we have something called the exposure triangle. That is our ISO, our shutter speed, and our aperture value. We need to set those three things correctly so that we get a perfect exposure. And not only that, we need to make sure that we set those correctly so we get a creatively correct exposure. That's a term I'm stealing from Brian Peterson. And what he's talking about there is we can get something that's uh, not too bright or too dark, but what we really wanna do is make sure that we capture something that we are either showing motion or freezing motion or isolating a subject using shallow depth of field or showing everything so we have a phenomenal scenic photo. And so we need to figure out how to do that and so what we're gonna do is in a second, I'm gonna bring out my computer and I'm gonna walk you through a spreadsheet. I know that sounds crazy, but that's right. I created a spreadsheet and you can download this spreadsheet from the Adorama Learning Center. And it just walks through some questions and it will help you understand what settings to use on your camera. And the nice thing is it allows you to put in a lot of different variables, the type of light, if you have a flash or a tripod, the kind of lens and what you're shooting. And based on that, it'll tell you what kind of settings to use on your camera. Now, ideally, once you learn how to ask yourself these questions, you won't need the spreadsheet. In fact, it's very, very simple. What you'll be able to do is do this all in your head and with a little bit of practice, you'll be able to do all of this on your own with no spreadsheet. You'll just become intuitively able to do this. And uh, when you get into a situation, you'll know what settings to use on your camera. So let me bring out my computer and we'll walk through it. Well, now that I have my computer out here, let me walk you through this spreadsheet. Now this spreadsheet doesn't calculate anything for you, but it helps you walk through some of the questions that you need to ask yourself. And so you can do this all in your brain, but what we'll do is we'll walk through this and it'll help you know what questions to ask, in which order, and then uh, at the end, what settings to use on your camera. So what I've done is, and again, by the way, you can download this spreadsheet from the Adorama Learning Center. So if you wanna follow along at, ho at home, you can do that, or you can just use a piece of paper that will work fine as well. So on the left side of this uh, spreadsheet, what I've done is I've entered this little uh, column here called scenario. And that's so you can write in different types of things that you would like to, to shoot. And then you can sort of work out all the variables and figure out uh, what settings to use on your camera. So we're gonna walk through several scenarios here and so um, let me scroll back up here. What I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna paste in some scenarios that we thought of earlier. And so we have uh, kids uh, playing sports outside. So in this instance, we're talking about soccer uh, in the middle of the day. We're gonna talk about shooting some kids in the backyard at night for maybe a birthday party. We're also gonna talk about maybe shooting a senior portrait. So getting a nice headshot of uh, somebody. And then uh, at the last, we're gonna talk about shooting a dance recital and we're gonna to talk to you about determining when it just won't work. And so this uh, will help you figure that out as well because that's nice to know. So what we're gonna do here is we need to fill in some variables. And once we have that, then we can solve the uh, exposure triangle, ISO, shutter speed, and aperture value. So first let's talk about the variables that we have to understand. And again, you'd be doing this in your brain, but working it out in a spreadsheet will help you sort of think through how to ask questions. So the first thing we're gonna look at is the light level. In other words, how much light do we have to play with uh, in this situation? So that very first situation, again, we're talking about shooting kids outside. So we're gonna say it's very bright. So we have uh, lots of light. So I'll type that in there. Um, the kids party at the backyard at night. Well, this is really low light. There's not a lot of light there. So we're gonna have to figure out how to deal with that. Um, the senior portrait, let's pretend for this hypothetical situation that we're shooting outside in the shade. So this is uh, shady, but bright. Um, we'll say, yeah, shade slash bright. So we've got plenty of light for that one. And then the dance recital, for this scenario, we're gonna pretend that this is the absolute worst light possible, so 
horrible light. In other words, it is really dark. It's maybe in a gymnasium. The lights are, you know, those, those horrible um, lights that make everything green. So that's what we're going to talk about in that situation. So the first thing to ask yourself is, what kind of light do I have where I'm going to be shooting? And knowing that is going to really help you understand what equipment you need to bring and eventually what settings to use on your camera. So the next thing we need to talk about is exactly that. What equipment do you have with you? So uh, we have another section of this uh, spreadsheet here, and it says, do you have a flash? Do you have a tripod? And what lens are you using? Now, the thing to understand here is this isn't, am I going to use a flash? Am I going to use a tripod? What we're asking ourselves is, is it available to use if I need it? So uh, on this first scenario here, where again, we're talking about shooting kids outside, we're going to say we have no flash and uh, we didn't bring a tripod because we just ran out the door for the soccer game. And for this one, we're using a zoom lens. And so the, the lens is maybe a 75 to 300 millimeter lens uh, because we're shooting sports. And so for this, I'm going to just uh, make a guess at what uh, part of that lens I'm going to be using most of the time. So I'm just going to put in here that I'm going to be using a 300 millimeter lens which is the long end. So I'm zoomed in to the maximum ability of that lens. And so now I have some parameters to work with saying, here's the flash, the tripod that I have and the lens. Okay, now that we have that, we're ready to start solving our equation. And so what we're gonna do here is we have to answer this question and that is what is the most important thing? Is it controlling motion, either freezing motion or showing motion or is it controlling depth of field? How much is in focus in the image? Now, if you're new to these terms, we covered depth of field in Digital Photography 101 episode 12. And so there's a lot of information about depth of field in that episode. So if this is new to you, watch that because it'll really help you out. If you're new to controlling motion, freezing action, and showing blur, well, you can check out episode 18 for freezing motion, and that will show you how to do that. We also have some other episodes on motion. I think episode 15, we shot about panning, and recently we shot one on using a slow shutter to do some neat things at night with light. So if controlling motion is your thing and it's new to you, watch those episodes. But we have to make a determination which one of those two things is the most important thing for us. And you have to make this decision in every single scenario that you have. It doesn't mean if you're shooting motion and that's the most important thing that depth of field isn't important. It just means that motion is more important. And you always have to make one more important than the other. So for this one, we are going to say that motion is the most important thing for us. And depth of field is not the most important thing. Okay? It doesn't mean it's not important, it just means it's not the most important thing. Now that we have that, we can zip over here to the right side of our spreadsheet and there's a little uh, column here and it says mode. And what that's asking is, now that we know what's the most important thing, shutter speed or depth of field, which is aperture value, which uh, mode setting do we put on our mode dial on our camera? Well, because we said shutter is, I mean, our motion is our most important thing, we control motion with our shutter speed, and so we would use shutter priority mode. Now, on a Canon, that is the TV on that dial, and on almost all other cameras, it's just an S, which stands for shutter. And so that's the mode that we would put our camera on. And now we are ready to go in and start talking about exposure. And again, here's our exposure triangle, the ISO, the shutter, and the aperture value. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about the ISO and what to set that on. Now, uh, the ISO, since we have lots and lots of light, we can set that to a low ISO. It doesn't have to be very sensitive. So we're going to set that to 100, and that's going to be great. Now, if you're new to these three things and understanding how they work in relationship to each other, check out Digital Photography 101, Episode 16. And specifically, I talk about ISO and what it does and how it works. So if these things are new to you, check out Episode 16 because I talk all about how these three things work together. Okay, now the next thing is we know that we are in shutter priority mode, which means that we get to set the shutter speed on our camera. But the question then is, what do we set that shutter speed to? So let's go back and look at what we have here. We have a 300 millimeter lens and that tells us something right off the bat. And that is if we're handheld and we know we're handheld because we have no tripod, our shutter speed needs to be at least as fast as the length of our lens. And that's a rule of thumb that we learned in episode 18. And so we know that our shutter speed has to be at least 
one three hundredth of a second at the very, very minimum to freeze that motion. But we also know that we have a lot of light and we really want to freeze that motion. So we're going to set our shutter speed a lot faster than that. And so we're going to set it to one one thousandth of a second. So I'm just going to put a thousand in there. So we're at a thousandth of a second and that's really going to freeze that motion. And what aperture value should we use? Well, we don't really care because depth of field isn't as important as the uh, shutter speed and uh, controlling motion. And because we're in aperture, uh, I'm sorry, we're in shutter priority mode, the camera is going to automatically figure out the aperture value for us. And so right there, we've walked through this. We know what settings to put our camera on. Now, one thing to note is that you really need to pay attention to what's going on inside your camera. So if you're shooting that soccer game and you're at a thousandth of a second and you see that inside your camera, the camera is blinking at you saying your aperture value is, uh, you know, it can't get wide enough or it's saying low, not enough light or it's saying high, too much light. You may have to adjust your shutter speed either faster to restrict light or slower to let in some more light based on what your camera is telling you. So this is just sort of a, a starting point, but it'll help you think through what you need to do and get you there. So let's walk through a couple more of these really quickly and we can see where we can avoid some problems using this methodology of thinking through our scenario. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna talk about shooting our kids party in the backyard at night. So let's talk about the equipment do we, that we have. So let's say, yes, we have a flash. We're not gonna use a tripod because kids move around too much. And since we're shooting at night, we have our favorite lens, which might be a 50 millimeter lens. Um, and so we've got that. Now, what's the most important thing? Is it motion or is it controlling depth of field? How much is in focus? Well, for my money on this, I'm gonna choose motion because I wanna make sure those kids aren't uh, all blurry. I wanna make sure I get some really nice shots. So again, I'm gonna say motion is the most important thing. Depth of field is something that uh, we don't care about too much for this scenario. And now we can go over to the right hand side and somehow I just scrolled way over. Um, I can go over here to the right hand side and say, what mode do I need to be in? Well, this again, we're controlling motion. So we're in the same exact mode, which is shutter priority. That's either TV or S on your mode dial. And now we can start dialing things in. So ISO, what do we use? Well, the light is really low. So our first inclination would be, let's crank the ISO as high as it will possibly go, maybe 3200 ISO. Well, we could do that, but we don't need to. Why? Well, we have a flash. And so because we know we have a flash, we know we can let our flash make up for some of that light that we don't have. And so let's increase our ISO, but not make it crazy that we have a lot of noisy pictures. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna type in 800. So we're gonna have our ISO 800, which is pretty high, but not crazy high. And what I suggest is you do some experiments to see what different ISO levels do for you as far as creating noise in your image. But 800 is a pretty good starting point. Okay, now that we have that, we know that we need to set our shutter speed to something. Well, we know we can't set it to a thousandth of a second because there's not very much light there. And so what I suggest that you do is make that shutter speed as slow as possible without having blur. And we know based on what we taught you in episode 18, there's a rule of thumb that says your shutter speed should be at least, the length, uh, at least as fast as the length of your lens or a 60th of a second. That's the slowest you should go when you're shooting handheld. And so we're gonna put our shutter speed at 60th of a second. What aperture should we use? Well, we're gonna let the camera figure that one out. So we're just gonna say, we don't care. The camera's gonna figure that out and we're off to the races. Now, once again, we need to look at that and see if our camera is complaining to us and saying not enough light or we need to do some changes, but this is gonna work out pretty darn well. In fact, we did a, an episode where we used these exact settings at night with kids when they were trick or treating. That's Digital Photography 101, episode 36. So you can see this uh, actually working out in real life. Okay, let's talk about one more here. And this is uh, shooting a senior portrait. So a friend of yours has asked you to shoot a senior portrait. So you found a great location, lots of shade. Uh, your, your senior's all ready to go. And so what you're gonna look at here is what are you using? So let's go in here and say, do we have a flash? Let's say, yeah, we have a flash in our camera bag. Do we have a tripod? Sure, we have a tripod because we wanna make sure that we have everything framed up just right. What lens do you have? Well, let's say you have an 85 millimeter which is a great lens. Um, and specifically, maybe let's say this is an 85 millimeter uh, with an aperture that goes to maybe 2.8, something like that. So we've got this great lens um, and now we're ready to go in here and say, where do we start? What's the most important thing? Is it motion or depth of field? Well, for a senior portrait, 
Hopefully that senior is not going to be moving around a lot, but we want to really get that nice shallow depth of field. So for this, depth of field is the most important thing, and our motion is not what we really care about. And so what mode do we set our camera on? Well, again, over here for mode, we would probably, most notably, we'd say we want to set this to aperture priority mode. So on a Canon, that's AV, and for all other cameras, that's A on the mode dial on your camera. So once we know that, we can go back out here and look at our exposure triangle and say, okay, let's start over here with the ISO. Well, we know we're in shade with lots of light. We can keep that ISO nice and low. So we're going to set that to 100. And we're going to say, what aperture value do we want to use? Well, again, we talked about depth of field in episode 12, and we know that we want to have a really wide open aperture, which is a low number. And so let's say that our uh, lens allows us to shoot at an aperture value of 2.8. So I'm going to put in there uh, f2.8, and there you go. So we know what that is. Shutter speed, well, the camera's going to figure that out for us because it's in aperture priority mode, and now we know that we have all of our settings ready to go on that scenario. And that's how it works out. What are you shooting? How much light do you have? What equipment do you have? What's most important? What mode do you set your camera in? fill in the blanks, you're ready to go. And I use this um, every single time I shoot. It's just an exercise I do in my head and it's become automatic. Now I want to show you one more illustration of how this can really help you out. And I've uh, created this hypothetical situation that is the worst case scenario. And using this methodology, we know that it's best for us just to leave our camera in our bag because it's not going to work out. So let's walk through it really fast so I can illustrate this for you. So we have this dance recital. And in this uh, fictitious uh, scenario, we're shooting, let's say, in a gymnasium. And it's really low light. And we're shooting from the very top of the bleachers. And uh, they won't let us use a flash. We can't bring in a tripod. and um, you know, we don't have a really, really nice lens. So what we're going to do over here is we're going to say, um, what equipment do we have? So we have uh, a flash, and the, uh, the answer to that is no. We have no flash. Do we have a tripod? The answer is no. What lens are we using? Well, we're using a 300 millimeter lens because we're just trying to get a picture of our kids. Okay, so we know that. What's the most important thing? Is it motion or depth of field? We know it's motion because those dancers, we want to freeze those dancers. So the answer is motion is the most important thing. Depth of field, we'll let it uh, come out where it comes out. So what mode do we use when we're trying to control motion? Well, it's shutter priority mode, which we know is the TV or S on our mode dial on our camera. Now that we know that, let's talk about the ISO setting. Well, in this light, it's horrible light. There's just hardly any of it. So we're really going to have to increase our ISO. So we're going to put it at 3200. And let's pretend that's the highest ISO we have on our camera. Well, when we look at this, we're saying, well, what shutter speed should we use? Well, we have a lens that's 300 millimeters. And let's say this is the absolute worst case scenario. We have no image stabilization on this lens. So it's just totally handheld. Well, we know that our shutter speed has to be at least 300th of a second. So I'm going to say 300th of a second here. Well, um, based on experience, and you can try this out for yourself, what would happen is as soon as we got our camera out and we're trying to shoot at 300th of a second, our aperture is going to start complaining and saying, there's not enough light, there's not enough light, and the images are not going to work. It's just going to be really, really dark. And so this is not going to work out for us because our aperture just won't open wide enough. And we can't increase our ISO because it's already maxed out. So the only option that we have is to slow down the shutter speed. And really in this scenario, probably you'd have to have it down to maybe a 20th of a second because it's just such horrible light. And at that point, everything is totally blurry and there's really no room for you to wiggle here because you don't have options that you need like a flash or a brighter light or a better lens. And so just based on this, you can look at this and say, you know what? this is not going to work out for me. I'm not going to get the shots that I would like to get. So either I need to rent a lens and a flash, or I just need to enjoy the dance recital and understand that I'm not going to get the shot that I want. Because sometimes that's the truth. You don't have the equipment or you don't have the right scenario to shoot the shots that you wish you could. And unfortunately, that's just the law of physics. And this uh, workflow will help you understand why something horrible is happening to your shots like that, where everything is all blurry. And that's because there's just 
not enough light. Well, that's the uh, methodology I, I use. I've taught this for years in my seminars and workshops, and a lot of people have used this uh, to get their thinking in the right shape so that when they go out, they know what settings to use on their camera, and they've been very successful. I hope you're successful as well. Well, thanks for joining me. That's all the time we have this week. Remember, if you have a question about photography, you can send those questions to me at askmark at adorama.com. Again, thanks for joining me. I'll see you again next week. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.